All right, what's up guys? Here we are, episode three. And the forming is now, we're almost done. A couple little things left to do, but we're, I suppose, 90% plus done with our forming job. Now, if you remember in episode one, I was describing about how we're gonna have this neat line footing technique. And I think I mentioned that essentially, the footing comes all the way down to here. And so about 18 inches of its height is made up by the dirt wall that we've left. So I guess that's the neat line, is the neat line of the dirt here. Now, the nice thing about neat lining is that you, it's a lot less form work. So, so we need to be having the top of the concrete this high above the native grade, but that would be a lot of extra forming one has to do. So with this technique, you get to save on wood, which is expensive right now. So that's cool. Uh, the way we decided to form this, I suppose, is a little different from the way we've seen online. Uh, essentially, there was a couple things that we were worried about that kind of led us to this technique that will hopefully be, be better. So one thing, for example, is that if uh, you had just this 2x12 trying to stand up straight, um, it, would, it would be kind of right on this edge, which I was worried about its stability uh, for a couple reasons. One is it's right on the edge. And two is that as we dug through here, the dirt's dry and it tends to kind of clump out and it's almost unavoidable. So for example, you can see I can stick my hand way in here because the, this is just kind of where one of the dirt chunks came out. This dirt's still here, this isn't. And so with the variations along the, the ground, um, it seemed like uh, just having the 2x12 with a brace out here might not be very stable. So what we came up with is you can see on the back side of this 2x12, we have this 2x8 that's laying flat. So that gives it a better surface area to sit on our dirt grade. So essentially the way we built these is we had our table set up and we would just kind of come through. We had some 8 foots and some 10 foots. Uh, we just sort of pre-assembled them basically. We screwed these two, the bottom one, the 2x8 and the 2x12, we screwed those together first. And then we just cut up a bunch of these chunks of 2x8 and just went one screw into the, the 2x12 and one screw on the bottom and then that would uh, make it more stable. So, so we, we did that and we just kind of set them on the ground just right on the subgrade we had. Uh, we tried it that way first before we uh, kind of got too worried about trying to shimmy it up with its exact elevation to just kind of see where we're at. And fortunately our subgrade is really pretty close. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but in any case, the, the forms itself were kind of just sat on the ground. So they're here under their own weight and we don't have to try to drive a form stake while also keeping them in the exact position because that's also something I find difficult is if we want to have your form exactly where it needs to be for your foundation and you want it to be straight and you want it to, everything to be square and perfect, it's kind of hard to do, keep it in exactly there and get your form stake right where you want. So with this technique, we were able to get all the forms laid out. We got the whole square set up. We, we re-squared it. So when we first laid it down, we were off by, I don't know, something like a quarter inch. Kind of scooted them around a little bit. We kept our batter boards with our string lines. So we were able to keep a straight string line. So effectively, we went through one side and we got it all straight. With the string line, we double checked our measurements going across, did that both ways. So we had all the, those dimensions and the squareness correct. And everything, again, hadn't been staked yet. It was just sitting there with its own weight. So that was cool. So anyway, we got it all perfect, exactly how we liked it. And then all we had to do is come back and we drove some stakes on the back side and screwed it in to just kind of secure it in place. So all in all, I'd say it worked pretty well. The uh, couple things left to do so dimensionally, like across the ground, it's, it's dimensionally, I would say, perfect or within the degree of accuracy of our measuring devices. Um, elevation wise, we're still off by maybe about a quarter or three eighths of an inch across the whole surface. So our plan to fix that, I'll give you a little preview now, we'll come back to it later, but we're gonna be having a brick ledge piece that we attach right here. The brick ledge has a structural reason in order to kind of assist with waterproofing of the walls. Since we had to attach that anyway, we realized that we can use that to set the final elevation across the top. And then we don't have to worry about trying to lift these forms all the way up. They're still just sitting on the ground, uh, again, under their own sort of mass. Now you'll notice there's a little dirt we piled up here along the edge. That's because uh, we got some rain coming 
and we didn't want uh, any, this is, since this whole area is flat, the water, who knows which way it's going to want to go. We didn't want it trying to run under our farms and into our trench. So there's just a little bit of dirt here to keep the water out. So the last thing we'll do kind of right at the end, we're going to come and add some kickers going out this way. We'll, we'll show you those once they're done, but that should add even more stability so that we don't have to worry about any blowouts on concrete day. So concrete's very heavy. It always wants to move your forms more than you think it will. So maybe we've overdone it, maybe not. But in any case, um, that's, uh, that's kind of, again, you know, what we came up with. These stakes kind of hold it in spot, we'll do the kickers in a bit, uh, but we don't have to adjust its dimensions anymore. All right. So what is going on here? Well, like Sharon mentioned in the last video, this is our main drain going through. That's kind of laid in place. We have a few more connections to make within the slab, but we wanted to at least get uh, everything set. That's got to go through the formwork again so we can kind of get this dirt set up before we get some rain tomorrow. So piping wise, we've got our, our drain coming through here. We're going to add a clean out to this later. Uh, this is a piece of conduit. It will be a piece of ABS. It's just a holder for now. In any case, this is going to be the, the main vent line. We're going to have a drain because this area is going to be a mechanical room. This is a piece of conduit that we can shove our one inch PEX through later. So the main water supply is going to come through here. We'll have a drain, a vent, some washer connections. We'll show you all that when that's done. Um, and then we kind of came up with uh, this little thing to hold everything in place. Basically screwed a two by four in here. Another screw at the end with a hose clamp, and uh, it seems to hold it pretty well. Uh, again, this is something you got to worry about when the concrete comes in. Its weight wants to push anything in its way and tip it out of position. So these uh, will hopefully be pretty strong, and, and that will be our system to hold those in place as the concrete's coming in. Uh, okay, so I think that's about it. If you're curious though, we don't do this every day. If you're a concrete professional, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think about our form work. Of course, we'll see how well it actually works. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, I guess that's it for this episode.